try to make me feel the serious There are times I've been in me But they tell me I'm the one with problems They're the ones who are insane So for those who are but won't admit it You shouldn't be like that Cause you could be 20% cooler And 10 seconds for love it Hello, mayors and general cults, my fellow bronies. Welcome to I'm Brony and I'm Proud. I've got Mitchell Andrews with me. Hello, Mitchell. Hello. How's it going, man? It's going good. There's no better way. If you're going good, you're going good. So tell me, how did you become a brony? I would first heard about bronies in my school like a year above me. He was a brony, and that's like two or three years ago. That's when I first heard about it. Sometime around last year, I decided to see what all the fuss was about and <laughs> decided to watch one episode, and I liked it. Pretty much how I became a brony. That's fascinating. So finding out from someone that you're up, and then it was sort of brewing in your subconscious, and then at the next moment, which happened probably a year later, you got into it. And I guess once you started watching one episode, it didn't turn into another. And into another, and to another, and I kept going from that. Exactly like that, yep. <laughs> nice work, nice work. Okie dokie. Who is Mitchell Andrews? A 17-year-old guy who lives in Brisbane. I guess I'm quite into doing drawing and doing animations and stuff like 3D animations. That's something that was brought to my attention due to one of the classes that I'm doing at school. It's ITS, and it's pretty much a class about computers. And it's quite a fun class. One of our assignments was we had to make a 3D game. So we had to do all like, the 3D modeling and all that stuff. And it was quite fun. So tell me more about this game, man. It was actually a tank game, essentially. The main character, or well, you play as a tank. It's a hover tank. We didn't really get to finish the game. We got one level done, a few sections of different maps done. Sort of like a beta test or something like that. I got the firing done. I had like a little laser sight type thing, which is pretty cool. I started doing turrets, but together, them to do the tracking motion was kind of difficult so I had him on like a scanning loop type thing. Yeah, it was me and two other friends that was working on the game. Fantastic. You actually brought up memories of me back in high school when um, it was the first few years we had a network. It was a 2D tank game, really highly addictive. Is it a side D one? I just remember it as being really simple and highly addictive. And I thought, gee, these guys are so cool. Why can I get in on this? But yeah, I hear what you're saying about a rotating turret because it presents another complication because, yeah, like you're saying, for tracking, you got to make sure that the turret follows the target or otherwise if the coding's not right, then the turret would just go around in circles and, you know, it yeah. presents a whole bunch of problems. So the fact that you found a way to simplify it is great. So, you know, you could get a development fund going. Yeah, that could work, yeah. <laughs> my brother, he's got quite a knack for Dota. Have you heard of Dota? Yes, I have. What a question am I asking? Of course this man's heard of Dota. I just watch like five minutes and you just see how someone's mind works. Multitasking different strategies at the same time. In essence, you know, if games are the future of entertainment, they're possibly training tomorrow's military leaders. So Mitchell, have you heard of fighting is magic. Played the tribute edition though, quite difficult to control. I don't know what happened, but the version I had is that your opponents, the AI, was so ridiculously hard I couldn't even bust a move. Was that the same for you? Yes. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Great concept, though. It was forced to end by, you know, the powers that be. I don't know, take the same gaming engine and maybe, you know, create something else. I was recently exposed to something um, to do with alpacas that were educating people in the economics movement, so my little alpacas. I thought, I know what this is. <laughs> What's your favorite background pony? Either derpy or vinyl. Top choices. I have to say the same. Vinyl's got quite the following on Facebook. Yeah. I'm constantly seeing in my interest page, oh, even the page fears, like how many new MLP pages are popping up every day. And I'm thinking, really? My concern, there might be a saturation of Facebook with all these duplicate pages. Like, well, if it's a page for Rainbow Dash, just keep it for Rainbow Dash, and, you know, and every brony wants their 15 minutes of fame. It's like, no, I want to be that quintessential page. What do you think about that <laughs> stuff? Everyone just wants to be noticed, I guess. I'm actually doing a, a TAFE course. It's a SERP 1 in engineering. The job that I would like to get is being a fitter and turner. You'll need to know how to use like CNC machines, which is pretty much like give like a 3D object to them 
and they will make it. And tech stuff comes in. It makes it easier, I guess, since I've already been doing it for a few years to learn how to do all the 3D modeling and all that stuff. Also, another subject that I do at school is tech studies, hands-on stuff like woodwork, metalwork, and plastic work and all that stuff. found out about fitting and turning by accident, actually. I was at a uni convention type thing. I was walking around for a bit with my parents. We decided we'd seen enough stuff, so we were about to leave. And mum saw this guy, and he seemed kind of lonely, so mum walked over to him and... As he explained what a fitter and toner was to me, I liked the sound of it more and more. It's something that I actually will enjoy. And the money-wise is quite good. Businesses that have fitter and toners in them, but they say that every day is different to the last day. I don't really want to be doing a job that's exactly the same every day. It's good to have some variety. Hell yeah, man. Fantastic. Everything that you've been learning so far and, you know, and very recently has been sort of building up to this. So the marriage of all elements. <laughs> Should I say elements of harmony, yeah, perhaps? Much. Outstanding. That's good stuff, man. For the layman like me, what is a fitter and turner? You know those reins on the back of those trucks? Yeah. When I was doing work experience, I was helping putting them together, which was quite fun. In general, a fitter and turner makes parts that you can't buy from like shops and all that. It's like an engine block or something like that. Quite amazing. Fantastic. I like what you said about variety, that you'd be doing something new every day, and that's something I enjoy and actually understand and appreciate in terms of my profession. As a filmmaker, pretty much every day is new. Fully noticed, you can now get 3D printers like 2K. If you said to someone 10 years ago, okay, you're going to be able to create your own stuff, manufacture it within your own home with relative ease. At the moment, the material is plastic for the 3D printing. In time, with developments in molecular biology, but more specifically metallurgy. So imagine, you know, metalwork at a atomic or subatomic scale and, you know, creating parts just like that. 3D printers still take ages, you know, to do anything. But yeah. it's just the beginning. We're aware from the 70s and 80s. So many garage-type businesses, you know, that turned into um, IT powerhouses. Apple for one, Microsoft for one, of course, and we all know which one won out in the end. So the 3D animation visualized within the computer, you know where it's going, and you're actually making it happen in a physical reality. Yeah. Are you Brisbane born and raised, or have you come from somewhere else? I was indeed born in Brisbane. My family had lived in Cairns, so mum was pregnant with me when she made the trip from Cairns to um, Brisbane, whereas everyone else in my family was born in Cairns. Kind of an odd one out. Fantastic. Now that's fascinating. So your parents are quite a few generations Aussie, I guess. Or for me, you know, being Australian, you're generally from somewhere else down the line. Yeah, well, one side of the family goes to Russia. <laughs> yeah. I'm first generation Australian, actually. My parents are Polish. That blood still flows thick through my veins, I reckon. And you're sort of reminding me that some of the best cinematographers come from Poland. Does that mean down the line, you know, where you're from or where your parents are from or where your grandparents are from? Is there almost like a genetic marker left behind that's passed on from generation to generation being nurtured with each of those generations and then eventually sort of evolves into something that's a part of you? What do you think about that? A good concept. I don't know. It's the old nature versus nurture argument, of course. <laughs> yeah. With nurture, whether it's, you know, the outside world or, you know, just your family unit that tends to influence you in a certain way where you're sort of going. I like to think there's a part of you that distinctly you coming into this world. You've almost got your own sort of mission in mind. Gradually, it either unravels quickly or it unravels slowly. For you, I think it's unraveled quite quickly. For me, it's still unraveling. I've been working as a filmmaker for over 10 years and you can imagine how patient I am at this point. <laughs> but generally, I've seen the change where, you know, 10 years ago, the only way you could get content was TV and radio and print, and now we've got this thing called YouTube, which has evolved over time, and I feel like it's my job to try and uh, really push it as much as possible. If you have an email address or a Gmail address, pretty much you have your own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I would encourage everyone to start documenting their life because you never know what's going to happen in the future. So Mitchell, we've talked about your life so far. We've talked about your interests and, you know, where you're going. And it's quite technologically um, related, interrelated within itself and to you for one circumstance or another. Where do you see the value of technology? It does really depend on how humans use the technology. If it's used for the right stuff, then it's like a godsend. I'm reading um, the Minority Report. It's like somewhere similar to that. Have you um, read or seen the movie Minority Report? Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah, it's pretty good. The ramifications, the implications of technology, the use and misuse of it. Yeah, and that's always a hot topic as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. What key things have leapt out at you from the story? There are the three precogs which see into the future. There is a chip that gets spat out that says that he's going to kill the head of the military guy. There's a second copy of that that gets sent to the army, just as like a, a backup plant, I think. 
After a little while, people find out that he was going to kill this guy, even though the main guy didn't actually know the guy and was going to plan on killing him. What they didn't know was that there was a... Well, they might have known, but there was a, um, a second card that was about that said that since the main guy had read that he was going to kill this guy, he changed his mind and wasn't going to kill this guy. But the army people got rid of that. That sort of ties into the technology thing, so it's just disregarding good information or what? I guess we compare that to, you know, to the world as we know it at the moment. Paranoid as it is, and, you know, we know that the world needs to be educated way more on friendships, so hence the importance of My Little Pony. I think it's got big implications for that. One thing we don't see in the show is those issues with technology. Although I've seen a fan animation where Twilight invests, or should I say invent, a telephone and answering machine for Celestia. And in the end, Twilight just blows it up because of the obscene messages that's left by Dan. Today, we you know we use Facebook like nobody's business. Yeah. For me, with Facebook, socially I'm organized, especially when I'm trying to get a group of friends together to do something, where it was probably a pain in the butt in the old way calling people and it's like, oh, they're coming and then they don't come or, you know, structure's great because you know who's not going and who's coming. We pretty much ignore the mice. It's like, well, you're either going or you're not. I used to have a, wow, pretty good free CCD camera, big thing, shoulder mount that works and then I upgraded to a DSLR. Man, that was a huge difference. Going from something so big to something so small, I knew that I would have to upgrade to high definition sooner or later. Just waited for technology to mature a little bit. Has it made a difference in the way I do things as a filmmaker? In a way, it has because now I record sound and vision separately, you know, just like they've always done. A lot of the technology is quite scaled back in terms of size. And then we've got the GoPros and cameras like it are so small and you can do so much more. If technology is magic, then I say it's pretty magical. <laughs> when you know what to do with it, especially in the yeah. creative sector. A lot of bronies, you know, they're using their tablets, drawing digitally, although some still do a hand drawing and scan it in. Very quickly, how technology is integrating itself into the creative sector, but probably fast-tracking creativity as we know it. And you probably know firsthand that you can design, you can uh, create a model in 3D, it's manufactured, fitted, and turned, and then you see it in a physical reality. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mitchell, it is that fast, isn't it? Yeah. Technology, whatever your definition is, listeners, tends to fast track, speed up our evolution, just like Twilight being evolved into the Alicorn. <laughs> But she worked hard, say, to quest her with her friends. I mean, we could even say the elements of harmony is a form of technology, a defensive technology that is utilized by the main six. Closest thing to we see is technology in Equestria. Although, you know, when all the powers were transferred from Celestia and Luna to Twilight, <laughs> that epic Dragon Ball Z battle at the end of season four. That was pretty cool. Anyone who says it's not, no, 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 you're lying. That's just cool. It's 20% cooler because it's got freaking ponies. Indeed it is. Well, Mitchell, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. Good luck with your studies, man, and good luck with your career. Thank you. Catch you later. See ya. This has been I'm Brony and I'm Proud. Lucky night speaking. Thanks for listening. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at IBAIP Show. Proud to be a Brony. Intro and outro by Black Griffin. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. My Little Pony, I used to wonder what friendship could be. My